Hey gang, welcome back to Northwest Fencing Center's coaching series. This is Coach McTeague and we're going to be walking through body cords today. We're going to look at foil and saber body cords, mask cords, epi cords, and we're going to look at what they do, how they do it, um, how body cords differ from one another, different brands differ from one another, and what I think are the best body cords. We're going to look at why they fail, how to test them, and also how to take care of them so that they don't fail as often as everybody else's. So let's start off with what do body cords do? It's pretty simple. You probably already know the answer to this question. They connect your weapon, your foil, saber, or epee to the real system and the scoring system in the club or venue where you're fencing. They have a kind of hard job to do because they need to be flexible and moving and yet out of your way. They need to be reliable and yet they need to be light. So they do this by using fairly thin cord. Some of it is more flexible than others and we'll get into that when we look at the different brands in a moment. And there are certain rules that govern um, body cords as well. Um, we're going to get into some of those when we start talking about national and international level tournaments. So, foil cords are the easiest ones to tell apart, and foil and saber cards are exactly the same. So anything I say for foil applies for saber. They have a clip, a grounding clip that you can see that clips to the lame that a foil or saber fencer wears. And that's what electrically helps define that lame area as a target. It has a three pronged end. That obviously is the one that goes into the reel because the reel has three prongs. And it has a two prong end with a little retaining clip. And that's what plugs into the weapon area. Mask cords have two alligator clips, like the foil body cord, and they clip onto the lame, and they clip onto a little tab on the bib of the mask to make the mask, or in the case of foil, the portion of the bib that is covered with lame material also register as on target. Epe body cords are pretty easy to deal with. They're the same on both ends because epes they do the same thing on both ends they only have to register whether the button has been pushed and they have to ground the weapon so that when you hit someone on the bell guard it doesn't go off so what makes different body cords different from one another in terms of brands we're going to look at foil body cords first you can find inexpensive store branded body cords, the cheapest body cords usually, and they're typically a $15 or so investment. The wiring is usually opaque. You can't see through the insulation on the wiring. Um, and the wire is flexible, but it gets stiffer and stiffer with age, and it's not super flexible to begin with you'll find that at the point where the body cords go in and out of the, the plugs, there's usually a little bit of shrink tubing put on there, and this is supposed to act as strain relief. However, you will notice it's very easy to bend this cord at a 90 degree angle, even with that strain relief as part of the cord. Then you have your mid-range or slightly better range cords. Um, these are usually referred to as German cords, Almond or um, All Star are the typical brands there. These cords have the very same kinds of ends on them as the um, uh, cheaper cords. And they also are simply using a bit of shrink tubing for strain relief. So it can still bend very acutely 
at the junction of the um, plug and cord, but the flexibility and quality of the cord itself is better. And often it's transparent so that you can see the condition of the wire inside the cord. Then we have higher end body cords. Um, and the two that come to mind for this are going to be Leon Paul or Negrini body cords. Um, the Leon Paul um, uses a very distinct three pronged end where you can see that it's all one flexible sort of piece of plastic. In this case, it's a transparent piece of plastic. All the new ones are that way. And you can see that that means that this is going to bend in a very gentle, very gentle way. And the clear plug at the other end also has the strain relief built into the plug, again, to make sure that the, plug, the, the cord doesn't bend very sharply at this particular juncture. I don't have a Negrini foil cord, but on the, I do have a Negrini FA cord, and they do a very similar thing where the cord has a piece of silicone that's inserted in that acts as strain relief to make the cord bend in a more gentle way um, as it exits the socket or the plug itself. And they do that on both uh, ends of the cord. The Leon Paul cord, you'll notice, is clear. You can, all, you can see through it, so you can see if wire is corroded or broken inside. And you'll notice that the pins on there are solid on the three-prong end. The All Star uses a spring clip um, style of pin where the pins themselves are made out of springs. If you look closely at your body cord, you'll see that. Um, and the Negrini uses that style as well. The quality of the wire on the Negrinis is probably one of its largest selling points. It's a slightly heavier gauge, but it uses a silicone um, covering, and it's very, very, very flexible um, and resists breaking from flexing for quite a long time. So. What's the difference in costs? Inexpensive Soar Brands ones, usually around $15. Mid-range um, style cords uh, are going to be in the $20 range. Leon Pauls are also in the $20 range. And the Degrini cords are up around $50 or so. So you can probably see that for bang for the buck, all other things being equal, that um, the Leon Paul cord is probably going to be a better purchase. And certainly in the armory where I do lots and lots of repairs, I see far fewer of the Negrini and Leon Paul cords coming in for repair than I do for the um, uh, mid-range and low-end cords. For someone who is paying for the repairs on their cords, typically one break of the cord and you've now spent as much money as you have to get one of the better cords. And the users that typically break their cords the most are the ones who take the worst care of them. Um, and that's either because they don't know they're young and they're just starting or because they got lots of money and they don't care. If you're that guy, good for you. <clears throat> okay, let me check my notes here. Um, when it comes to mass cords, you'll generally see mass cords around in two different types. There's this telephone cord style or springy type and the straight type. You can't buy one of these anymore because internationally they have been outlawed and gradually here in the U.S. they will also be outlawed. They're not going to be legal anymore. Um, the main convenience with them was when you were hooking up, your mask could be a long ways away from you, but there are certain issues and stuff with them that the FIE have decided that they're not a reliable source. If you have one, you can still use one in local tournaments, but eventually you'll have to replace it with the straight cord. Um, there isn't, as far as I can tell, any brand difference from place to place on the straight cords. 
They have an alligator clip. It's of reasonably good quality. It's a soldered connection, so it doesn't typically come loose. Um, they don't take a lot of strain like body cords do. Um, as long as you're not letting your mask hang from that cord. Um, and typically people don't because the mask is a little too heavy and the clip lets go and boom, the mask hits the floor. So eventually you'll wind up with one of these. Speaking of how they fail, um, the most common failure point for a body cord in foil and saber is going to be at the junction where it plugs into the weapon from having sharp bends in it all the time. And people that tend to let their weapon hang from their body cord while they're hooking up and they're just letting their weapon hang or they're, um, that puts a lot of strain on the cord and it will break it. Also, this end of the body cord is right there where your hand and your glove are and it operates in a very sweaty environment and that has its effect on it as well. Um, that's where body cords fail most of the time at that junction. Same is true for an epee body cord. They fail at the same junction and they fail for the same reason. People let them hang loose or they uh, corrode because they've been operating in a very sweaty environment. Epee fencers have the ability to plug either end into the cord um, so it's not a bad idea if you're conscious of which end you are using to rotate that around a little bit. But the easiest thing that you can do, um, and we're going to talk about this in a later video when we talk about hooking up on and off the strip, is to hook your weapon up last so that it's not dangling from your hand and uh, from your cord all the time and putting that extra strain on the body cord. The other likely place for things to fail um, are going to be the pins themselves. Some of the cheaper body cords will have a pin that's got what we call a basket spring that spins around. Um, those operate really well right up until they don't. And when they break, there's really nothing much you can do about it. Um, most of the other body cords will use the type of sort of folded spring. Um, and these are some get packed down. Um, some of you may have found in the past when you had a new body cord that it was very stiff plugging in and unplugging from, from the weapon. And that gradually that got better over time because those springs get packed down. They can get packed down to the point where, particularly on a foil, you'll find that the cord, or even on a saber, you'll find that the cord will rattle around in the socket. And this will cause intermittent off-target lights to come on and off. Um, what you need to do to fix that is to take your tip screwdriver and put it in between the springs and pry that spring back open so that it's wide again. You'll never be able to get it as stiff as it was when it was new, so don't worry about making a problem for yourself there. But that's how you fix that problem. Epe cords, you'll have some of the same instances happen. Um, but because there are three pins instead of just two, um, and there's a large bail on the, so on the uh, socket of the FA to hold it in, you don't get as much strain on the pins as you do with the foils and sabers, where the retaining is part of the plug um, with the clip. Now, the last thing in terms of daily usage uh, or not the last thing. Second to last thing with daily usage is people that are young or have weaker hands will often try to pull the cord out by grabbing the cord itself and pulling it out of the socket rather than grabbing the socket itself and pulling it out. Grab the plastic, grab the socket and pull it out of your weapon and out of the body cord with your hands on the plastic parts and not by the cord. This is also something people at the club who do their armory will love you for if you hold the socket on the cord and unplug rather than just yank on the two cords because you can have the same bad effect 
on the reel that you have on your body cord. It's going to make your stuff break more often. And lastly, how do I coil my cords up and take care of them? Mass cords are pretty easy. You just clip the two clips together and you set it aside and it's not a problem. Foil cords, what you'll often see people do with their foil cords is wrap them up and have use the small end to wrap it around in a figure eight. I actually don't like this method. Um, you have to get it unwrapped. It's wrapping this really, really tightly. You can see this cord that someone uses, it's wrapped really tightly. Anytime a cord is wrapped exactly the same way and tightly all the time, the more likely it is to break there. Typically this pigtail end with the clip on it should way outlast the rest of the body cord, but often they break because people have been wrapping them really tightly. It also means that you have to unwrap this cord when you bring it to an armorer to get checked at a national or a regional competition where there is a weapons check going on. But there's a way that you can fix this. The best way to wrap a cord, either epe or foil, is to take the cord, both ends of the cord, and stick them together, and hold it up in your hands so that it's just hanging out in front of you. And with the pigtail, if the pigtail comes all the way down to this end, great, go ahead and grab it. But usually it just hangs like that. So now you bring this tail end up and you put it in your hand and you have all the cords together. At this point, you just want to put an overhand knot. The same kind of knot that you start your shoes with in the morning. And now I've got a nice, neat package. If I have a locker, I can clip this on the shelf of the locker and I can just let it hang like that. It's not going to be a problem for it. When I go to the armory line at a regional or national event, when I have to have my stuff checked, I can hand my cord to them, epe or foil or saber, just like this. I don't have to undo it. And they will be able to plug the two ends into the tester clip this on, get the new inspection tag on, all without undoing this thing, tangling your cord up. You don't wind up with five cords in your hand. That's a tangled mess you have to sort out. Everything's nice and neat. The cord's not placed through any tight curves. And it'll last a much longer time if you take care of it this way. Remember to store it in your bag someplace where it's dry. Same thing with an epe cord. And I'm going to show you what also happens here. When you do this kind of, it doesn't tangle up. I can take this one I just wrapped. I can grab one end, boom, pop the other end out. It's not tangled up. When you take care of them that way, they don't tangle. When you wrap the little cord around or some of the epe fencers try and wrap one end around the other. Um, you're almost always going to have tangles when you undo it. But if you do it this way, you won't have any tangles in your cords. One, two, three. Again, just an overhand knot. It's a little hard to see with this clear one. Same kind of knot to tie in your shoes in the morning. So, now when you go to a competition, you wanna make sure all your stuff works. Certainly there's an armor or somebody who does armory at your club and you can ask for a little bit of guidance with that. But when you're out on the road, you want to check your stuff. The easiest way to do that is to have a small test box. This happens to be a Favero test box. Um, I kind of like these ones because they're rugged. They have a little plastic coating over the outside of where your cord, your cord will plug in. Some of the other ones just have little nubs like a typical body cord would, or typical socket um, uh, would have on, um, uh, on, a, <clears throat> on a real cord or on a socket inside of, a, uh, inside of your weapon. And 
when that's in your tool bag and it sits up against the wrench, it lights the lights. And then when you go to use it, the battery is dead, but that can't happen with this particular one. It's one of the reasons I like it. Um, on the other hand, it's a little pricier, but if you're going to be doing the sport for a long time, it pays to experiment, look around for the things that you're going to find will last and work well for you. Now, the whole idea of this cord is, is that you, I'm going to, I can plug this in here and I can plug it into my weapon and I can push down the tip of my weapon and see if it actually is working. But I can use it to check my body cords too. I can take one of my screwdrivers and this is a foil. And you notice that when I, let me get this around so you can see it. If I short these two pins with the cord, you'll see the light lights to let me know that the cord is working. Because with this particular cord, I can actually clip the um, alligator clip to the thing and, and oh, it's going to make a liar out of me here. What I can do is clip it to my screwdriver. Yeah. I'm trying to juggle this so you can see it. It's easier when you're not having to show an audience. So I can clip it to the screwdriver and I can short this and oh, look, there's something wrong with this body cord. All the lights should be lit now. Let me try with one of my other body cords. I grabbed that one out of the batch of club cords. So it's one of the cheaper cords. And now I got my nice new Leon Paul cord here. And when I short this, yes, all the lights light. And I can wiggle the wires around and make sure that stays that way. and I'm good to go. So I know that this cord is good, but I know on this cord I've got a problem and I'll have to troubleshoot it. With that base, again, it's pretty easy. Both ends are the same, so you plug it in. But with the Epe, you'll notice that I have three prongs and I don't want to short all of them. So if I short one pair, I'll get a light. And if I short the other pair, I'll get a different light. Again, let me hold this up so you can see a little bit better. I get a light on this side, and then if I short these two, I get a light there. If you can wriggle it through and get all three to contact, in theory, you can get all the lights to light. But it's a little bit harder to work with that way. And this is all much easier when you're doing it sitting in your lap instead of trying to hold it up for everybody to see. And you also can use that to check your weights and shims and things on your weapons for foil and, uh, and epi fencers. The question comes up, how do I test my mask cord? It's pretty simple. If you take a body cord that, or that you know is working, you can clip this to one end of your body cord and then this end gets clipped on just like before. And you'll see if adding that cord in makes it stop working or if it still works. Pretty straightforward. And these are pretty robust. They don't typically, they don't typically break that much because they're not under that much stress. Still, you want to check them before you head to the strip so that you don't get any yellow cards. So to recap, we have low quality, medium quality, and high quality body cords. It's always cheaper in the long run to get a higher quality body cord. You will be spending less time fixing it. You'll have fewer yellow cards you didn't see coming. Um, if you have to pay someone else to fix it, it's going to be way cheaper to have a, a more expensive body cord to begin with because you won't be fixing it as much. You can further reduce the amount of fixing that the body cords um, undergo by keeping them dry and not letting your, your mask or blade dangle from the cord. That's key. And it's something that young fencers do a lot because they're having trouble hooking up. Again, we're going to cover that in a later um, in a later video. So then we keep them dry. We don't let things dangle. We do a nice, neat, simple coiling of the cord that doesn't 
uh, put stress on the cord itself. Now, um, in terms of rules surrounding body cords, you must have two working body cords when you go to a strip. You must have two working mass cords when you go to a strip, and that's a minimum. Also, in international competitions, you'll notice that these newer, um, I specifically grabbed these two newer Leon Paul ones because you can see that the plastic surrounding the, the me mechanicals inside of the plug uh, are clear, and you can see through it. This is a new FIE regulation for body cords. I do not know when or if the U.S. fencing uh, community will um, also adopt that rule, um, but typically they will lag a year or two behind the FIE before implementing those rules. Um, if you think that you're going to be fencing internationally at some point, then if you're looking to buy a body cord now, you might as well get one like that. It doesn't cost any more, regardless of manufacturer, to get the clear plug versus the colored plug. Um, <clears throat> so um, that rule is there. And it's, also, and it's to prevent cheating. Nobody could hide a switch inside of here or a magnetically triggered switch or something of the sort. Um, not that anybody I know would go to all the trouble, but um, that is something that is a new rule that you can look forward to. So um, that's pretty much it. Um, if you have questions, uh, club members, if you're going to go to the um, chat tonight, you can ask questions about um, body cords. We will be doing uh, later uh, videos on how to repair them, but that's a difficult video to shoot and we need to work about that carefully because there's a lot of little tiny fine print fine pieces to work with difficult to see on camera. Um, also, if you tune in tonight, you can give your try at seeing what you think the punchline to the following setup line is. When is a joke a dad joke? So tune into the uh, club chat tonight and uh, let me know what you think the answer to that one is. Meanwhile, to uh, the rest of the folks out there, um, take care of your cords. Fewer yellow cards, less to worry about. And as I keep saying, chance for you to control a piece of your environment when you're fencing to make your fencing more carefree. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you for the next video later this week.